Hey everyone, Fire here, and today we're going to be talking about 7 things you probably missed when you watched the 3.18 reveal stream. So just like last league, rather than wasting your time explaining what you already know, I'm going to do a video explaining the things that perhaps you missed when you first watched the stream. And the first thing we're going to talk about today is whether Headhunter is dead. It may very well be. So what's happening next league is rare mobs are having all of their mods replaced with the arch nemesis mods from the previous league, or from the current league rather. Though some old nemesis mods are being baked into the new arch nemesis mods and the Arch Nemesis mods are also being reworked and retuned in some capacity. The biggest problem, in my opinion, is that Arch Nemesis mods are good against players, not against enemies. So if you think back to a lot of what the Arch Nemesis mods were, there were things that provided, I believe, a damage ring around an enemy, or they created walls, or they helped enemies to run away. Now, those things went on enemies were really good against players, but if we obtained the ability to run away, for example, that does nothing because we can already do that. If we gained the ability to create random walls, well, that doesn't matter anyway, so I'm not super convinced that the ability to steal these mobs is going to bring us to the old power level of Headhunter. Now, it might end up being stronger, so there is a smaller pool of Arch Nemesis mods. Some of them are considerably powerful, and in certain environments where you can steal many of them, it might be a lot better than the old Headhunter, but I think the safe bet is to assume that, for the most part, Headhunter is most likely going to get nerfed. Now, this has a lot of deep implications. For example, even though five-way farming might be viable with the rework, a lot of people won't want to risk league starting on a five-way farmer anymore. This means that Legion Jewels at the start of the league may go back to their old level of price, where we had Brutal Restraint being 7x at the start of the league, that sort of thing. I expect emblems are going to be even lower in price, since there's going to be much less demand initially. This is going to be a pretty big deal, and in fact, five-way farming just might be dead all around. If the Arch Nemesis mods don't replace the level of rare mods that we currently have, five-way farming isn't really going to be a thing anymore, in it, at least in its current state. Now, this also might make Beyond harder, so if the Arch Nemesis mods are weaker, then farming Beyond is going to put us in a position where we don't have the tools to kill Beyond mobs anymore, but on the other hand, it might make Legion and Delhi easier. So. A lot, of the pro a lot of the difficulty with Legion and Delhi at the moment, um, particularly Legion, is that you get a lot of rare mobs and they all have these aura-related buffs and the auras buff each other. And so that's where you get Legion, you know, Marraketh mobs that can off-screen you at light speed, things that are attacking 10 times a second, for example. Now, that's not going to exist anymore. These mobs may individually be stronger, but when they're all clumped up, they're not going to be buffing the hell out of each other and one-shotting you anymore. So I think it's a safe bet to assume that the Legion mechanic overall is going to be weaker even though the individual mobs are going to be a little stronger. Next up on our list is something we really need to talk about, and that is that non-Uber boss farming is most certainly being nerfed. So you probably saw in the announcement that there are going to be new Uber versions of the Pinnacle boss fights, but the problem here is, is that they are accessible through Atlas Keystone passives. There's no extra cost associated with entering these fights. Now, the big problem with the cost of entry remaining the same for the uber fights compared to the non-ubers is that the uber fights are more rewarding, and as a result, the cost of the fragments and the, the entry costs to these fights are going to go up for everyone, because the rewards are going to demand it. Now, if you're not really familiar with how this works, you can take a look at Legion League. Now, in Legion League, people worked out that if you played Tornado Shot or Cyclone and you had a Headhunter and three Inspired Learnings, you could farm an insane amount of rewards, to the point that people were willing to pay absurd you know, amounts of money and currency for the Emblems. This meant that anyone that didn't have a Headhunter and three Inspired Learnings couldn't actually turn a profit from these emblems. Now, obviously, the people that were buying the emblems outstripped the amount of people supplying the emblems, even though everyone was farming monoliths in Tier 2 Glacier. So we ended up in a situation where basically, unless you were one of the top players in the world, you weren't able to actually turn any kind of profit from five ways. You just had to sell your emblems and your splinters and get the money from the people who were farming it. Because if you tried to farm these things, you would make less money than if you had just sold your access to these fights. And that's what's going to happen with the non-Uber fights. If you go, if you want to farm Cirrus, for example, the cost of the fragments are going to cost a lot more than they did this league, and that's because the Uber Cirrus farmers are going to be getting more rewards. So th I think this is kind of a big problem. Now, the Uber bosses were compared to the Feared. The Feared is something that you can easily do in the first few days of the league with a whole bunch of different builds, whether you're a solo player or, or playing in a group or whatever, so I fully expect that all of these bosses are going to be farmed within the first few days of the league, if you are someone who is intending on farming these fights on the non-Uber versions, 
I got news for you, and it is bad news. Don't don't plan for that. Your leak start strategy should not include farming non-Uber content. It's not entirely safe. Now, it may be the case that for the first week or two of the league, it's still okay. You can still get away with it, but I wouldn't count on it. I definitely would not take that risk. If you're planning on doing boss farming, plan ahead. Plan for the Uber fights. Plan to make your build a lot stronger than you normally would because that's what may end up being required of you. Recombinators are a new currency type being introduced in the Sentinel League. They are going to come exclusively from Sentinel content, and the way they work is kind of like a scuffed Awakener orb, or maybe they could be compared to the old synthesis mechanic. What they're going to do is basically take two items of the same type, so for example, two body armors or two rings, and you're going to merge them, and they're going to have some random amount of mods from each item combined together. They're going to pick one of the items as a base type and keep that base type and discard the other. Now, you can combine influence and non-influence, you can combine fractured and synthesized, presumably. So I don't think there's, there are going to be very many limitations on this, but I think the outcomes are going to be screwed towards being more random from the looks of it. So you're not going to have what you have with Awakening Orbs, where you have one guaranteed mod of each type being combined. It looks more like it's just going to be completely random that some mods from some items, uh, from one item is going to be combined with some mods from the other item, and that's what's going to happen. Except except for one major big deal, right? And that is that there are going to be new rare chase mods that aren't available from either item that can randomly roll on after you combine them. So if you looked at the preview on the previous slide, you would see that there was a ring that had a plus one power charge as an explicit modifier. You would also have seen that there was a chest uh, body armor with the Mage Bane mod on it. Now, this was an old Scourge modifier, and it was an implicit at the time, but this is now an explicit modifier. This is a really big deal. So what it looks like is it's going to take a whole bunch of the Chase, Scourge, and Synth implicits, and it's going to make them available as explicit modifiers. And this is a really big deal because this is now interactable with the deterministic Eldritch crafting that was re released in the previous patch, Echoes of the Atlas, I believe. So you're going to be able to put a power charge onto a ring, and then you're going to be able to craft the other side of the ring. So if a power charge has a prefix, which I think it will be, you'll be able to then deterministically craft the suffixes and stuff like that. And that's going to be a really big deal. Once you get one of these items, the base, just with this mod, is going to cost a lot of money because it can be used and interacted with in a deterministic way in a lot of cases. So this is going to potentially be very big money for crafters who figure this system out early and are willing to take risks. And especially if recombinators on low, I can definitely see people buying them in bulk and then just smashing together lots and lots of bases until they hit these rare mods. Now, they can be further merged to create the most powerful items ever. So presumably you can end up with two of these really powerful base mods and then combine them with each other. It's possible we might get rings that have plus one power charge, plus one frenzy charge, for example. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the limitations are going to be. Maybe it's going to be locked to one rare mod, so I could totally be wrong here, but the way Chris was talking in the reveal, it seemed like that was going to be the case. It may be the case that we end up with, in a world where you can get two keystones on a body armor, and then you can further craft, say, the prefixes or the suffixes, and then the implicits with Eldritch crafting, which is just going to be absolutely busted. On top of this, there's probably the possibility of plus two charge rings, so it's probably a world where you get a plus one charge ring from the recombinators and you get a plus one charge ring from synth and then you combine them and then you have some chance to have both the input of the base the synth base combined with the plus one mod and you would end up with like a two plus two power charge ring that's probably going to sell for more than a mirror um so this sort of stuff is going to be really rare but it means that the possibilities are really really high in this case it's also going to be very likely that fractures will be guaranteed to carry over now if you think about the way fractures work it would it would make total sense it may also be the case however that fractures only carry over if the base type of the fractured item was brought over but the reason i don't think that's going to be the case is because in the preview that we just saw we had an astral plate with 100% global defenses as a fracture. Now, that only comes from the grasping male base, which means that it kept the astral plate base and then brought over the fractured global defense mod from the grasping male. So I really suspect that fractures are going to be kept. This is going to greatly improve the value of fractures when interacting with recombinators. So I think that's something to look out for. Maybe you want to live search some fractured mods. That's going to be a really big deal this league potentially. And I think meta mod interaction could have very deep 
and powerful consequences here, but because of the fact that you can put metamods on both items and then they could conflict with each other, I don't think metamods are going to be in, are going to interact with each other and with this mechanic. So I think if you put a metamod on, on, on an item and then recombinate it, it's going to basically ignore the metamod the same way as if you were to smash essences or fossils onto an item with a metamod. Fourth up on our list is the new Atlas Keystone Grand Design. It is absolutely ridiculous. Now, the way it works is that small Atlas Passive Keystones are going to grant nothing, but for every notable that you have allocated on your Atlas Passive tree, you're going to have 1% increased pack size. Now, realistically, for most trees, this is going to equate to 20 to 30% pack size per map. And it's going to have some downsides. And I don't just mean the travel nodes that give you increased map drops and stuff like that. The minor nodes for mechanics that you want to farm are going to be ignored as well. So in the example I use here with Expedition, there are minor or small Atlas nodes that give increased explosive placement range. Now the, those are going to be rendered useless. So there will be some downsides even with targeted farming mechanics, but the possibilities make it all worth it because if you combine the notables martial forces with shaping the valleys and then you have a really really juiced map you could end up with 90 to 100 percent pack size and that is insane for these big heavy juicing strategies because mf farming which relies on item quant and even just normal farming suffers from the fact that item quant has diminishing returns now we didn't know this until recently uh, i think it was in scourge league that this was revealed to us but Item quantity has, suffers from diminishing returns, which means it has a reduced effect the more you have of it. This means that if you want to engage in MF farming, the best way to do so isn't to just endlessly stack item quant, but it's instead to increase your pack size and to improve the amount of mobs in a map. And this is the best way to do it. So 100% increased pack size is just doubling the base amount of mobs. This has very big implications in very niche situations. So for example, Gilded Expedition juicing is now, if you were to hypothetically be able to reach 100% pack size, you're now going to have 540% runic monsters. That's 5.4 times the amount of runic monsters from a normal expedition encounter, or it's the equivalent of basically being able to do five and a half expeditions in one go. The Delirium meta is back, and it's back for a whole bunch of reasons, but the main thing is that Delirium is back on the map device, and I'm sure you guys probably remember the last two times this has happened. Delirium was a very polarizing mechanic whenever it was on the map device, and it warped the entire metagame because it was, in most cases, the best thing to farm. Now, other than it being on the map device, we've kind of had the stars align here. Promenade's still in the rotation, Ramparts and Tropical Island are returning, which means that if you wanted to farm a map that's good for Delirium, you have a nice variety of choices. Now, this is really going to depend on whether you're interested in Promenade for the Div Guard, the Nurse, I believe, and also whether you want to do Ramparts or Tropical Island because you prefer the map layout. On top of that, however, you can now stack all three influence types. So you're going to be able to stack Celestial Influence with Conqueror Influence with Eldritch Influence. And the way you would do that typically is you would get Conqueror maps, you would add Shaper or Elder Scarabs to them, and then you would add the Eldritch Altars via your map device. So you, you can have all three influence types in a single map, which is going to be an insane amount of extra mobs in any given map. This is just absolutely busted. I... I'm blown away by the fact that this is now possible. This is a massive, massive, massive buff to Delirium. And if Headhunter is actually nerfed, like we presume it will be, these farms are going to be very difficult. So the way all the Delirium mechanics work at the moment is if you wanted to do one of those 300 Splinter Delirium Mirror Runs, you needed to have a really, really good build. Your build needed to not just be strong, it needed to be fast. It wasn't enough to just clear the mob, you had to do so quite fast, even when the Delirium got very thick and very powerful to the point where mobs had, you know, over 90% reduced damage. So this is going to be really good for people who put together good builds and are able to do difficult content before other people. This is a really good thing for top players if you're someone who is typically ahead of the curve because you're going to be able to access these rewards when no one else can. This means you can potentially just farm mirrors every day, right? This is this is a really good thing for those kinds of people and even later in the league, this is still probably going to be very inaccessible to the majority of the player base. Number six on the list is that Scarab Drops are being nerfed and they are being nerfed very significantly. So being hit with a triple nerf here, first off the low tier MF farming strats 
that use operative strongboxes are being nerfed, so the operative strongboxes will no longer be able to generate higher tier scarabs. This means that if you want to interact with the strongbox or the ambush scarabs rather, you're going to need to do so in high tier maps. So low tier MF farmers probably want to reconsider their entire strat, but this will lead to overall less scarabs being produced. But the two major things are that scarabs from Eldritch Altars are just completely removed. Eldritch Altars will no longer, no longer be able to generate scarabs as a reward type, and on top of that, the Arch Nemesis reward structure is being removed as well. So even though Arch Nemesis mods are staying, we're going to lose their rewards. You're no longer going to be able to pop a mirror image combo in a map and generate upwards of 20 scarabs in one go. So most of the major sources of scarabs are just completely being removed. Scarabs are going to go back to their old level of scarcity for the most part, I presume. Now, on top of that, the Stream of Consciousness Keystone is going to enable non-scarab farming. So if you don't put scarabs in your map, you're going to get extra amounts of other content. And what this means is that GGG seem to want to compensate for the reduced supply. So even though there's going to be less supply for scarabs, there's also going to be less demand for them as more casual players are going to move back to non-scarab forms of farming. Last up on the list is a pretty big one, and that is that mechanic blocking has some very large implications. Now, they went through this very briefly on the stream, but basically they've picked up 10 mechanics that you were going to be able to choose to no longer ever find in a map, and in return, you're going to have a 2% increased chance to find all of the other content. So the new mechanic blocking feature is going to be able to be combined with the base chance, the Alice passive bonuses, and the stream of consciousness keystone that's being added as well to end up with a very large chance to encounter a lot of mechanics in a map. Now this is going to be particularly good for harvest, ritual, and heist since these mechanics don't really rely on their fragments. If you think of something like expedition, expedition becomes a lot better when you put a scarab in with it. Now these mechanics don't really or require fragments. Ritual requires maybe a vessel, but it's pretty good even without vessels. Heist and Harvest don't have scarabs associated with them, so you can take Stream of Consciousness as well as the other stuff, and you can still end up with a high chance to hit these mechanics. If you have all the Atlas bonuses for them, you're going to get them in their fully juiced versions pretty often, like maybe two out of every five maps, for example. And I have a spreadsheet put together for this. I'm going to go through it a little later on, and I might even make a whole video on this because this is, a very, this is a very interesting topic and has a lot of possibilities that are opening up. Now, this still might also be good for splinter farming. So if you wanted to do a breach and legion strategy, you could still use the legion and breach scarabs all in one go. You could add in sextants and all the atlas tree stuff and just not use stream of consciousness and lose out on that small amount of extra chance to encounter these mechanics but you're going to be getting a bunch of these mechanics every map guaranteed via your scarabs and whatnot so this is just a high chance for an additional monolith and a high chance for an additional breach to show up each map now with the map device there is a possibility now to set up a farming strat where you get four juiced essence mobs every map this isn't confirmed because the data I've found from other people regarding the natural spawn chance of essence kind of fluctuates between people's research. A lot of people have come close to a number that is 40% from what I can find. Now, if you trust that number and you follow it along with all of the other bonuses available to it, hypothetically, you can get upwards of 90% chance for an, for an essence mob to appear in a map. You're also going to be able to take the Atlas passive nodes for a guaranteed essence mob and then the new map device, or rather the old returning map device mod that is going to add two essence mobs to your map so basically every map you get four essence mobs and with the alice passive tree you can absolutely juice the hell out of them so this is going to be insane essence of essences are surprisingly potentially going to be a lot stronger than they were even last league and this is also going to open up potentially a lot of low investment strategies so you could do this juiced essence farming in conjunction with juiced ritual heist harvest and eldritch altar farming all in one go and you're going to be able to farm these pretty much every map for 2c so you put in 2c you get the four juiced essence mobs and then you have around a 40 percent chance to find ritual heist and harvest in their buffed forms and you'll get a bunch of eldritch altars for free so this is really, really good news for casuals. It might even be very profitable for higher level players. People who are interested in harvest crafting and profiting off that are going to have an absolute field day with this. Uh, Sushi in particular, I think, is going to be really happy with all the new stuff being added. And I think this is still going to be good for mechanics that do require scarabs. Because even if you're playing with Stream of Consciousness, getting Metamorph in a map even without all the juice from the scarab, it's still going to be pretty good when you consider the amount of time it takes to clear out a metamorph. You know, metamorph only takes 10 to 20 seconds at absolute most if you're playing a decent build. So just having a free metamorph 
two out of every five maps is gonna be really good news. So I've put together a table here. I'll share the spreadsheet in the description of the video so that you can just go through this for yourself. But basically, this is the base chance for each of these mechanics to show up. Then you have the Atlas passive chance, the stream of consciousness chance, the total, and then the total when you add blocking. So if you were blocking nine mechanics and you took all of the Legion nodes on the tree and stream of consciousness, you would have a 43% chance to encounter Legion or Legion monoliths every map, but you wouldn't encounter everything else. So I think a lot of people are probably going to use this blocking mechanic at around the four to seven mark. So... If you're blocking seven mechanics, you could, for example, get a 36% chance to find a harvest every map, 35% chance for ritual, 34% chance for smuggler's cash, and then just not find any other mechanics, which is fine if you're not investing in these mechanics via the Atlas, because you, you're not going to do an unjust monolith, you're not going to do an unjust breach, you're not going to be doing unjust expeditions, for example. So I think that's totally fine to just be blocking most of these mechanics if you're not investing in them. And then if you look at the essence calculations below, you see that you can easily get it to around 90%. But yeah, I think the sweet spot's gonna be somewhere in this range, four to seven, probably something like that. If there's anything at all that you think I've missed or you'd like to hear my thoughts on, hit me up in the comment section below. I'll probably just make a video on it if I feel like it's an interesting topic and that people are interested in it as well. Otherwise, if you like this video, give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm sure you'll hear from me shortly.